Hey, Pangu. How about some coffee? This awesome view from uh, Irma's new apartment. Here's want to see the messy apartment. This apartment allows dogs. Ah, oh, so delicious. <clears throat> uh, so, Pangu, uh, I wanted to talk about uh, um, techniques that I've been working on um, to deal with uh, a kind of a haunting of the mind. Um, you know how when you're uh, just going about your business and all of a sudden you just remember this, this moment that like really embarrassed you or upset you or disturbed you or something and uh, suddenly it just intrudes upon your experience uh, full force and uh, it can be disturbing and shocking and unnecessary especially when you're thinking of something that happened like 10 years ago you know and like you know I'm not that person I was 10 years ago or um, you know there's there's no way to avoid you know uh, upset and so to uh, to have it come back and haunt you 10 years later seems unnecessary And I tried uh, meditation, and uh, my meditation instructor said that uh, when thoughts intrude on your meditation, uh, you should talk to your brain uh, like it's a, a child that you care about and that you love, and you just say, no, don't, not, we're not going to think about that right now. We're just going to put that thought up on a shelf here, and we'll think about it later. Right now, we're just going to, just going to breathe count our breath and that works pretty good um, except for I think that the thoughts must be dealt with um, to put them to rest and uh, some of the greatest successes I've had have been uh, going on like long bike trips like you know eight hours or more mm. and uh, you just kind of let your mind go over these problems and these memories. Um, you just thoroughly examine them, like, you know, really, like, dig down and think about uh, uh, every bit about it that's bothering you. And sometimes I find, like, the more I consider something that bothered me, um, sometimes it's, it starts losing its power. You're, like, thinking, oh, actually, it wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, that was a little upsetting at the time, but um, not that bad, really. And then it kind of loses its power, and it just stops reoccurring. But some things uh, in my life uh, were really upsetting, and uh, there's no denying it. There's no downplaying it. Uh, and uh, something that I found recently that uh, I feel kind of works for me is I go to... Uh, oddly enough, it came from a book. Um, someone was talking about having memory storage, and they had ma imagined their memory like a, a museum and each wing would be towards certain topics and the, all the information would be displayed you know visually or uh, uh, in code like something that would promote uh, a remembrance of uh, the information you're looking for uh, I thought that was fascinating and so uh, I thought that in my mind in my, uh, in my, my warehouse uh, I would have a courtroom and I would bring the information, that, like the upset that I had, uh, to that courtroom, and I would lay it out. And, uh, for instance, um, I uh, was around somebody that was giving their opinion about something, and I pointed out uh, what I thought was a... Uh, sometimes people get uh, focused, or my point was, sometimes people get focused on the symptoms of a problem when the real problem is uh, pretty obvious and easily to acknowledge. Um, and so really, like, I think that's where the focus should be on, the real problem, not on the symptom. Uh, you fix the real problem, the symptom goes away. And I said that to this person, and this person uh, lost it. And uh, it, was, it was with a group of people, and... Uh, the person got so upset because he felt that my opinion uh, made it seem like his opinion was wrong. Um, he felt threatened by someone that had a different opinion. Um, that he he got he became furious, and uh, everybody I was around actually became angry at me. Not because I'd done something wrong, but because um, 
they thought I should know not to uh, upset this person, that this person was real sensitive. Um, and so I took all that information to the court in my mind. And uh, what didn't occur to me is on, under cross-examination, uh, all the people who judged me for like setting this guy off had all had problems with that guy. They had all just said something um, you know, basic, something about the way they felt or what they thought about something. And this person had freaked out. And in one case, uh, he broke somebody's door. And in another case, he got in a fist fight. And I thought, everyone else has now learned to tiptoe around this person, this really upsetting person. And uh, let's, uh, let's go inside. And uh, I, had, uh, I hadn't learned that lesson, and I don't think that, uh, I don't think I'm ever going to learn that lesson. I think that people that can't uh, um, communicate what they feel without feeling that any other, you know, contradictory information is a threat to them. And that the way that they're going to be right is every, anytime someone mentions something that makes it sound like they're not right, is they're going to attack that person. And uh, when, I got, when I got that into the courtroom of my mind, uh, suddenly that memory that was really upsetting to me, I remember everyone was angry at me, and it kind of ruined an event. Um, but now in retrospect, I realize that uh, I didn't do anything wrong, and I don't need to, uh, to hold on to that as a bad memory, actually. It was, uh, now I think of it more as a, as a lesson, that uh, when there's people like that, in your life, like if they can't control their anger, if they break things and hurt people, uh, then they need to be removed from your life. You can't just like, well, let's just tiptoe around this person. Let's be so careful and cautious. And this person's just, let's just let him be in charge. He needs to be in charge. Let's just let him be in charge. Um, you know, he'll always set the tone and we'll always agree with him. It's like that, uh, like a crazy Twilight episode where the kids have like these uh, crazy mental powers, and the adults have to like just you know give them whatever they want. They have the they have childish desires without the adult uh, uh, restraint. Ah, uh, all right. Well, hey, Pangu, thanks for coming over to uh, to our place, and uh, yeah, I'll show you around a little bit more later. And uh, thanks for having coffee with me.